your host and why my news might be. All right, let's do this. Welcome back, guys, to Execution with Ruben. Sorry for the technical difficulties there. So going back to what we started uh, prior to the conversation. So basically, uh, Cashman comes up. They're asking him about Hicks. Hicks ends up being this um, failure of a, a contract a, a extension since the moment he signed it. And now he... Uh, Cashman comes in and he's like basically saying, "Oh yeah, we're gonna have him come back healthy and and productive and, and and earn a spot." Now, I think that's Cashman gaslighting. I don't I don't think that there's any possible way that you can actually trust Hicks to man a fourth outfield spot for the New York Yankees when he's already complaining about not having playing time and not having a manager. You, you know what it is, Ruben? You know what it is? It's the shiny bald head club. Yep. It's the guys with bald heads coming together and just getting everybody else angry because they're so frustrated that their heads look like a golf ball that they Cashman has to come out and say, oh, yeah, Hicks is going to be on the Yankees still. And there's nothing you can do about it because we're bald headed shiny men and, and that's a, and that's the thing when you look at um like you know if they were if they were to really live up right to their ball headedness because like you know you got some some big superstars who have been bald you know what i mean but these guys don't take um criticism and they push it to the side and, and ignore it and that's the problem right there you know what i mean they're, they're not even it was a joke by the way no no offense to the ball people out there yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know what I mean? So, in that aspect of it... But Hicks head it does look shiny as hell, though. Yeah, it is mad shiny. I will say that. Um, but when it comes to that, though, um, if you look at it, uh, Brian Cashman, if for so long, like, I've always wondered, why does it take him so long to execute what is already obvious to everyday fans that watch the team, like, every pitch, every out? You know what I mean? Because in 2018, okay, we're going to go with Boone. Boone, right off the bat, that first year, he did not impress me because he ended up making all the wrong bullpen moves. And we had such a good team in, in, a, in, a, in a division that was actually weaker at the time. Because, you know, you had the horrible Orioles at that time. You had even Toronto was bad. So now you, when you look at it, it's like we're, lucky, we're fortunate to win 100 games. And, and, and that's why I never liked the, uh, how Cashman constructed this offseason, um, his offseasons. And if you look at it now, this guy ends up um, saying that, that, that Hicks can earn a spot back. No, bro. Like, he, it's time for him to go. You know what I mean? Uh, there's plenty of other teams out there that are willing to take a cheap contract. What do you think about that Long Island Yankee King? What do you think about Brian Cashman saying, hey, screw you guys. Aaron Hicks is our guy. What do you think? And you could carry it away, Ruben, because this is a yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah let's see what LA it's your says. show. <laughs> What's up, Ally? What's up, Anthony? But yeah, when it comes to uh, when it comes to that, like I think Hicks has to go. He has to go at this point because there is no reason for us to have him on the squad. He's over. He's he's overstayed his time here. The guy signed the extension and basically uh, became Ellsbury. Stopped playing, and when he did play, he sucked. And then he's shown glimpses, but he's just not consistent. The guy doesn't have the mental fortitude to play in New York. It, it, there's no way Cashman can mess up again like this. Like he, it, He's been making moves that I've been like, okay, wow, he made the obvious move here. Now, the question is, can he continue to make the obvious moves that have been obvious to us, the fans, for, for, for years now? And, I mean, but, like, he's just, uh, in my opinion, he's just an egotistical guy because mm -hmm. he had a whole bunch of simps. Uh, everybody loved Cashman, Cash God, whatever. And now that he doesn't have that love anymore, you see the more narcissistic side of him coming out 
And this is why mm-hmm. I believe he's making those kinds of statements because he knows for a fact it's going to trigger Yankees fans. Yeah, I mean, I think so as well. I think he has gotten to a point where he, he is full of himself in a sense. You know what I mean? Um, uh, Cashman at this point, like, he got so used to Up, which he's done, but it's like you need to also sometimes just stop trying to be the smartest guy in the room and just make the freaking right move. Like, there's no reason why we th- we shouldn't have gotten a Machado. You know what I mean? Especially if you look at it, he never extended Judge. You know what I mean? Like, you look at Atlanta right now, and Atlanta uh, has shown how to build a team. You offer them money up front early. And Cashman has failed to do that. Like you, you want to um, execute your plan of building with the young guys, and oh yeah, we're gonna go ahead and be uh, be an operational death uh, death star. But how can you do that if you're not locking them up for a long term? So it's like you got Atlanta who has their right field, their center field, their first base, their second base, their third base, their catcher, all like for at least six to seven to eight years. You know what I mean, like. It just it doesn't really make any sense. What's up, Anthony Medina? What up, Anthony? How's it going? Anthony Garcia, Yankee Long Island King. Obviously, this is the first episode. We don't do live streams like that, so the numbers are going to be a little slow, but it's all for you guys. Catch it on the replay if you're not catching it live. Yep, yep. So uh, we'll be doing this on a weekly basis. So be uh, expecting an episode as the news come in and um on a weekly basis, you know? But, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, Cashman needs to adjust. And then going back to the previous live, somebody had mentioned, um, I think it was um, it was either Anthony Garcia or who was the other one? Um, Siciliano about James Click. It's the same thing. James Click came in from Tampa in 2020. The guy didn't build the Astros. So how can we go ahead and want to... Had all the contact hitters. Had Imagine all the-, all the headlines in New York if that guy Click were to ever be the GM of the Yankees. New York Post. Oh, <laughs> James is not letting it click. What was his name? James Click. Yeah, James Click. So he'll be like, they'll be like, the Yankees. It's are not, not gonna- clicking with James. <laughs> You want it from cash, man, the guy with the cash, to click. Hey, James is not clicking. That's the I I think one of the great things that that could happen that would kind of be uh, full circle is that... Tyler, how's it going? You know how um, Brian Cashman um, ended up, like, having a sour relationship with Jeter, right? So only have Jeter come in and be his boss. Like that's something that 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 I would have I would like to see where he's like, hey, you got to report to Jeter. So that way, um, there's some kind of power balance because right now, as we've seen in most of everything in life, when you centralize all the power and decision making in one area, it ends up messing it up in multiple other areas. Like it, it, the manager is no longer the manager; he's just there to like you know coddle the players. Oh, I feel better. I feel better. It's okay. You know. So it doesn't make any sense. And and you heard that Aaron Boone was giving Yankees players pacifiers. What what would you say? <laughs> Bruh, I would be I would definitely be questioning what the hell is going on. <laughs> like, how are you, how how are we even in the postseason if that's the case? I mean, that's that's um <laughs> that's what basically what Aaron Boone is doing. He's cradling these players. Yeah, They're like I mean, mentally like, weak. Yeah, you look at look at Glaber Torres. I mean, the guy went on a, on a he heard his names and rumors and went into a slump for like a month. And the guy was just trying to pull everything, hit home runs. Like, oh, I can make it here in New York. Let me hit a home runs. And it's like, dude, just play your freaking game. That's all we're asking. Play your game. 
And that's the problem right there, that Boone doesn't hold them accountable. From day one, he doesn't hold them accountable. And at that point, that's where you bring in a Don Mattingly. You know what I mean? Like, that's the guy that, that I feel like it's old school enough, but also still uses the analytics. And that right there would allow the balance that we need because there's this whole approach about, oh, uh, the anal- uh, analytics say this, this, this. That's not true. And analytics doesn't say any of that. It doesn't say to hit your best player second. That is the interpretation of these so-called baseball guys. If Brian Cashman was right here in front of your face right now, what would you tell Brian Cashman? I would probably tell Brian Cashman, like, you guys need to let the manager be a manager and stop only looking at the numbers. Numbers are great. I love numbers. But you cannot replace the human factor of uh, that that pitcher has it going that day. Let him go 110 pitches and, and let, let him get used to it. Play you want to say, come over here, you shiny, bald-headed freak bastard. What are you doing with the Yankees? You want to say that? Uh, or, or would you ask him what kind of lotion does he wear on top of his head? See, my, my, to make my it so shiny. Him, my my thing with him is more just, you know, what what's up? Like, what, what happened? What happened since 2009? Like, why why are you trying to reinvent the wheel? Yo, what's up, Johnny? How you doing? You know what I mean? Like, that to me doesn't make any sense. That's, like, I would be like, it was obvious you needed contact hitting and lefties for years in New York, and you got rid of them all. And now you finally get contact hitting. So, so what's the uh, what's the Rizzo and Astros news? You know anything about that? Uh, Rizzo and Astro, I don't. But, I mean, it, I wouldn't be surprised if they try to go after Rizzo because it, it, they could use one more additional lefty. Rizzo has the contact approach that they love. So, I mean, I can see that happening. I was actually saying that I could see them even go after a Jose Abreu if that was the case. Because um, the guy that they had now, uh, his name is escaping me, but um, Guriel, he, he he didn't hit very well at all this past year. In the postseason, he, he did his thing. But if they wanted to get an upgrade on offense, you could go for Jose Abreu or, or Rizzo. Because Rizzo in that lineup, bro, you put him hitting like fifth, and or even six. That's a deep ass lineup. You know what I mean? But, I think Rizzo is going to whatever team uh, Judge is going to end up on, anyways. So speaking about Paul and Judge, so he has to come back like to me I'm like I want to say it's a 60-40 that Judge does come back and the reason why is because Judge is the cash cow bro like they give him the Judge's uh, chambers in right field and you're telling me that you're not going to resign him because you got outbid by your cash cow like like it doesn't make any sense you want to make sure that that the Judge is back because he makes you that money he pays for himself and more and he's homegrown. Like, there's nothing like a homegrown MVP. You know what I mean? So, like, judge, so basically, judge. what this uh, Mike from the AF said, MLB on Fox posted that the Astros have Rizzo as their number one for first base. What do you think about that? <sighs> Scary. Um, I think Rizzo would consider them for sure if Judge doesn't come back to the Yankees. I don't. I don't think. Rizzo, I I don't know if Rizzo really would want to go to San Francisco. That's just me. Like I don't, I, I, it's a bigger ballpark. I'm not sure if he would be interested in that kind of ballpark. Um, he he could be. Uh, they're like attached to the hip. But I think Rizzo is either going to the Yankees or the Astros could snatch him up. You never know. I just don't see. I think uh, he's just following uh, Aaron Judge wherever he he goes. Yeah, I mean, and that's the thing. Like, that's why, like, I think there's a possibility, but I just don't see how San Francisco plays for him. You know what I mean? Um, but then again, he could go into a full, full blown average hitter. You know what I mean? Hit 320 with, without the shift and focus on hitting, um, doubles 
in, in San Francisco. So the the only positive uh, thing about New York versus California um, is going to be due to taxes. It's not like yeah. we have competition from a state, let's say Florida, like Texas. Texas, or something like that. Mm-hmm. So it's going to be. Yeah. It, you know, it's not like, wow, let me play in California and be taxed more or the same as if I stayed in New York. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. Exactly. So that's the one thing that if, if the Yankees are close and let's say, let's say for hypothetically, you got a, the Giants offer a, a little bit more per year. But if the numbers are super, super close or they offer the additional year, I think Judge stays with the Yankees. they but then, but then, then again, he, he grew up a Giants fan. He he was a Giants fan, and he said that he wanted to start his career as a Giant and end his career as a Yankee. So I don't know how much of, of being a Giant would be something that he wants. I mean, he's guaranteed to be a Yankee legend, so that's not that's something that he has to think about. Because Robinson Cano, you know what happened to his career, he has to see the outcome of that career and many others. Exactly. And, and that's why the Yankees have to execute this off season. Like they, the execution on this is so important to bring judge back because what's the point of finally developing an MVP caliber player in your system, homegrown, be a Yankee legend, one of the best players you've, you've ever had in the franchise and you're not going to bring him back. You know what I mean? Like, and he has to be back. So, Mike from the Ash says, how do you guys feel about the Yankees being in on Verlander again? Verlander, Verlander is so good. But at the same time, like, I just feel like it, it would be such a Yankee thing to sign Verlander and he ends up being like Randy Johnson. You know what I mean? When he came over with us. But at the same time, Kevin Verlander, Brown, et cetera. What happened? Kevin Brown, Roger Clemens. Yeah, so like I mean, even Roger when Clemens, he was in his forties, won, won the World Series with us. Now he came back again though in his forties. Yeah, and, and, but if you look at the like he ne- he never pitched well in New York, and and that's the part that kind of worries me uh, about uh, Verlander. Like I would much rather go for a Rodon in that case because Rodon is twenty nine, he's 30, 29, 30 years old. He's had two relatively healthy back to back seasons. Now you know for sure he's real because. The question on Rodon was injuries and can he can he repeat what he did in 2021? Because he's never done that before. So now with having uh, Rodon um, do it for two years in a row, and and when he played in Chicago, he wasn't a guy that they, they would square up. He, he didn't let, um, allow as many home runs the way uh, Cole does. So I think you know what's really going to mess up the Yankees uh, training away Luis Medina. That yeah, guy's gonna be a stud. Medina, Medina looks like he's gonna be a stud, bro. Like, I mean, I, I was not happy with that Montas trade. I, like, yeah, horrible. I it, like, I, at first, I was like, "Yo, Medina sounds like he could." Like, uh, I mean, Montas could be good, but like, I never really thought. Now, nah, Montas is trash. I knew from the get go he was gonna be trash. Because I, I, every time I saw Montas, like, I didn't, I didn't see a uh, Luis Castillo. You know what I mean? Like, I didn't see the the if factor. You didn't see that he's aggressive. He's, any he's, any any player picture whatever you get from Oakland picture specifically it's their their numbers are going to be inflated in a good way because they play in the Coliseum. Exactly. So I don't know what what this love fascination with uh, Brian Cashman is always trying to get starting pitching from Oakland. I don't know what's up with that. Yeah, like it doesn't make any sense. And then we gave a Waldachuk, we gave. Jay- He could pitch in New York. That's the thing. Like, you already had a guy that was a swing starter at the very least and could end, uh, could have ended up being a setup guy and, and out of the bullpen or maybe start as a fifth starter. So it's just like... It, it, Tyler says bring in Mike Sosha or Dan Mattingly for manager. I, I, I like Don Mattingly more than Sosha. Um, I think Don Mattingly, um, being, being a player that played in New York, and also understands the media better. And then Maddenly also, I think with him, he also uh, understands like the, the consistency of having the same lineup. I think Sosha 
towards the end, like he would kind of maneuver lineups a little bit. And he was like in that mold of what's his name? Joe Madden, who ended up getting fired from the Angels as, um, after replacing him. So I, I would much rather have Don Madden. And, and also the thing with Don Madden, look at the way he managed Alcantara. When Alcantara had it going, he was like, hey, you still at 90 pitches, keep going. You're at 85, keep going. And, and, and he let the pitchers like challenge him. That's what I liked about Madden. What? I'm a Yankee King. What, what's with you, with you and Manny Acta, bro? <laughs> I don't understand the whole Manny Acta. How, how would he do better than Don Mattingly? I don't understand. <laughs> Yo. That's so random. Manny Acta is like the... Uh... He's a bench coach, I think, or some kind of coach in That's Seattle. like Bartolo Colon if he never made the major leagues. <laughs> Yo, I don't know, man. Like, I, I've never been a big Manny Acta guy. I never saw him as a guy that was, wow. You know what I mean? Uh, but Don Manley, to me, like, the way he managed the, the Marlins, it, to me, it showed that he has the control. They, they play hard. They, they, they play the right way. The pitchers go deep. So I, I, I definitely think that Don Manley would be a great choice. And if not, if not, the one the one guy that I really would like, and he's and he would be a rookie manager, and that's uh, Mark DeRosa. From Mike from game. the Ash says, "Would you guys like James Click over Cashman?" My opinion is that he really didn't do much with the Astros. He was just a fill-in guy. Whoever I forgot the, the Ludwig or whatever his name was, the former GM of the Astros, that was his team, not Clicks. He was just like a fill-in. So yeah, hell no, no, I wouldn't prefer him over Cashman, even though Cashman is a bonehead. Yeah, no, that, that, that's Luna's, uh, Luna's build right there. That's that, it, it the, Clake is just taking the, all the glory uh, with the World Series, but he didn't build that team. And he didn't have the same philosophies. He was pushing back on, 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 on their philosophies that they had established. Like, uh, Dusty Baker, um, was butt, butting heads with him. And it was, if it wasn't for the, for the owner, with Cashman and say, hey, you make the roster construction, let him, let the let the coach actually manage and stop trying to tell him how to make their lineups. Stop telling them when how how much they can use their starters. That's the part that they need to do. But I don't think Boone is a guy though. Boone the buffoon. Boone, Boone is a He's got to go, bro. I don't think we could ever win with him. That, that's my thing with him. David Stearns in, is the name to replace Cashman. David Stearns, I like. I like David Stearns a little. Um, he, he, he's built some pretty good teams in Milwaukee. Um, and I, I would be interested to see what David Stearns would do with a real payroll. That's a pretty interesting name right there. All I know is the Yankees need to build around Aaron Judge, even though he might have a few years of being in his prime. Obviously, his older years is going to be a little bit of a headache, but if I were the Yankees, you lock down Aaron Judge. Yeah, and that's the thing. Aaron Judge is, for all we know, he could age like a Nelson Cruz. You know what I mean? Like, this Judge right now, yeah, he like like he's in his prime at the current moment, but let's say once you, you know Giancarlo runs out, his contract finishes and now Judge DHs. And Judge has, if you see the way Judge goes about his approach, he wants to hit for average. He wants to be a complete hitter. I think Aaron Judge would age much better than people expect. Oh, man, you bring up uh, John Cole Stanton. I just gives me a headache just hearing his name because he, the Yankees just got him for no reason. Like, that's a player that's that has disappointed me ever since we got him. So yeah. he's just uh, filling. He's like taking a DH spot. Sometimes he's clutching the playoffs, but he's always on DL. That, that that move made absolutely no sense. Looking at it now, it made sense, obviously, when they got him. But, you know, oh, man, just just hearing that name. Yeah, Giancarlo's been 
Giancarlo's basically been damaged goods since he got here. Like, it sucks because we never got to see the real Giancarlo stand. Like, the real, like, MVP caliber, healthy, near goal glove right fielder. Um, because if you, if you think about it, if, if he would have been a guy that just aged well, they didn't have the, all those leg injuries. Um, Giancarlo and Judge healthy. I mean, those two guys would have been lethal in, in the postseason. Yeah, and unfortunately, I don't think we're going to see that anytime soon. Like, yeah. especially in the regular season, you know, John Carlos Stanton just can't keep up. Yeah, he can. I mean, that's why I wanted I, I wanted Bryce so freaking bad. Bryce Harper was the guy that uh, between him and Machado, like that off season to me was the off season. That was the one. Um. I, like Carlos Correa is out there again for the second year in a row, but to me it, it was Machado, bro. It was it, it was Harper. Those were the guys to get. Those are the guys that hit great pitching. So uh, Mike from the app says Nemo or Benintendi. There was rumors Yankees are interested in Nemo. My opinion, like everybody has a hard on for Nemo. I don't understand why. Maybe Ruben, you know more about Nemo. You want to address him? Yeah, the the thing with Nemo, um, I, I I love his on base percentage. I love that he's a lefty bat, but I don't like his injury history. Like he he's only played a hundred plus games twice in his career. He finally played one hundred fifty games last year, so it feels like great timing for him. Uh, he he did stay relatively healthy in the in the shortened season for for COVID, but I mean he just he hasn't shown the durability that I like. You're, you might as well go with Benintendi, who's a proven goal glover, a proven contact hitter. He's only going to benefit from the shift even more than, in them, than, than Nimmo because Benintendi can now pull for power, get back to hitting 20 home runs like he did in Boston, but still hit for 300. So, like, I, I think Benny is the safer bet. Uh, but because like, Nimmo, like, again, he has really good stats. His on base is great, but like, I don't think he is – the the number one option if that's the case. I mean, everybody loves that guy. I don't know why. Like, I, I repeatedly that's hear his name. Frank so many teams right. want him. I <laughs> like, man. I hope you're 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 wrong about um, Brian Cashman messing it up. Like at this point, I just want I want how to do his freaking job and push back on Cashman. Like it's his team. No, he's not going to do that. They're, they're joined at the hip. They have PTSD from dealing with uh, George Steinbrenner. That doesn't make any sense. Ally says, why not get, uh, give Floreal left field? <sighs> um, I like Floreal. I've always liked Floreal. But my only thing about Floreal is that they're not going to give him a chance, bro. Like, they, they, they're not willing to give him a chance. And and a lot of people say, oh, he's a quadruple A player. But I, I don't see it. I don't see it because... Um, he hasn't had enough time consistently to play to prove that he can hit or not hit the major league pitching. So I, I, I'm high on Floreal, but I think um, he just needs to get traded because I don't think they're going to give him a real chance. The Yankees do that every, every every time. Once they put a player in a certain box, they will never give him a shot. Yankee Long Island King, let me ask you a question. If you took a time machine or invented a time machine, I'm guessing Ruben can hear me now because we're talking over are, each other. One of the things you but, guys are, um, are, are seeing out there, L.I. Tyler says Flo is not it. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, he can't hear uh, me. Tyler, uh, uh, I don't think Floreal is a legitimate option because the Yankees already decided that he's not. That's the, that's the way I see it. So, Yankee Long Island King, if you ever took a time machine, would you tell your younger self, hey, the Yankees will regret trading for I, I don't want to be a wrestler. I, I want to be a baseball player. You think, think you'll be a decent player. You think uh, you'll be a... Uh, regret, uh, <laughs> you can't hear me. Ruby can't hear me. 30-30 leadoff bat. You um, think you'll be a major leaguer? Um, ends up being the real, real deal, like all-star time. Yankee Long Island King. Hey Felix. Yeah, you I can't, can't hear you. Yeah, yeah, you can't. You can't hear me. But I, I'm guessing they can hear me. 
So, um, right in the chat, can you hear me? Let's see. Yankees will say yes. We can hear you, Benny Felix. Is my left fielder. Yeah, Tyler, I agree. Benny is the left fielder for sure. Benny is the left fielder. I mean, I think three to four years will be good. Yeah, they can hear me. Uh, Ruben, Ruben can't hear me. Cutting Felix, you got it right. Switched. I wanted to be a ball player, but I was good at 20, 22. Jaws daughters at the plate and Chase Headley defensively. This dude said he was Chase Headley defensively. <laughs> and I was good at, uh, at the plate like Josh Donaldson, but uh, in case highly defensively. Damn. But yeah. Let's see real quick. What up, Jimmy Rowe? How you doing? Hold on one second here. It's that time of the show where Ruben has technical difficulties. Yankee Long Island King says, I was actually scared of being a wrestler, but then I said, fuck it. Why were you scared? Um, <laughs> All right, one second here. Can, uh, is everybody able to hear me on, on the chat? Alright, cool. Comes to that, I mean, I Cashman needs to execute. He needs to execute. This is a, a, a crucial off season. It's time for Cashman to do his thing. Cashman needs to win, and he needs to prove himself. Yankee Long Island King says, I was scared of getting hurt, but then I tried. It it's like Snoop Dogg with weed and addiction. <laughs> the hell was that? It's like Snoop Dogg with weed and addiction. Hold on one second. Alrighty, so let's see. I was trying to make a funny pun, but it didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> nice job, Eli. So, anyways, any questions, guys? Write in the chat before we wrap this up. Obviously, um, all right, guys. Um, newer episodes are gonna have more people, but this was just a test. So, um, we can't repeat the same moves. We definitely need to. Make sure that that we resign Judge. We gotta resign Rizzo. And <laughs> Your thoughts on Cubs, Justin Steele. Yo, Eli. 
you're not going to make a left-handed start into another bullpen arm. It's not going to work, bro. The Cubs are not going to trade him. He had a really good year. He's not going to be traded. Yo, Mike, that is wild. <laughs> yeah, this is the first episode, so Ruben's going to have a little bit of technical um, difficulties. Field. Oh my God. Please, As a side like hustle, can't being can't a bro. Colombian that, drug lord okay. in Florida, I don't even want to see he's getting Brad. notifications on his so phone by his clientele. Has become, <laughs> no, I'm just joking. Um, Overdue, so it's like I'm just saying that because he can't hear me. He's probably not gonna hit well. Oh, that's the sound that goes. Okay, okay, okay. The, the robot that that robot sound is playing. I don't know why. <laughs> that's hilarious. Let's see if I can fix that. Yeah, so that sound was going off. Oh, that, okay. That's hilarious. What, what are you saying? That's the funniest thing I ever heard in my life. I mean, it should, it shouldn't be playing. No, it's just, that's, a, that's funny. This dude said, here's your host, N1 News Ruben. That's the sound that goes off every few minutes. <laughs> That's hilarious. Yep, first show, technical difficulties. Thank you guys for oh being here, God, being our test subjects. As a fit, so that was awful. <laughs> this is hilarious, man. I'm still laughing at that. Sydney Ponson or fifth starter. It's hilarious. I can't believe that sound effect kept playing. I, is that I can't hear the stream because Ruben was having technical difficulties, so I have to play the audio of his Skype and relay it to OBS. No problem, Anthony Garcia. We got you. Tony Garcia. Alrighty, well, this is the first episode of Execution with Ruben, and thank you, Felix, for everything. Um, yes, sir. I can't really follow the show too well. Um, next time, we'll definitely do better for you guys. And uh, Yeah, definitely, definitely. Yeah, so you guys... Uh, uh, just know on a weekly basis we're gonna have this show. Um, follow me on Twitter at Cruz Yankee Fan, and also uh, my channel and my news um, hyphen Ruben. Um, that's my YouTube channel right there, and. This has been Felix from LYNews.com. Hola, cómo estás? I'll check you out next time. Make sure to like and subscribe. See ya. Falling down in the heavy sky.